I want to welcome you. My name is Rodney. I work at Kenred, a center at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University, NMMU, and Kenred stands for Center for the Advancement of Non-Racialism and Democracy. With this particular event of the dialogue, we have a partnership with CASE. CASE is Konrad Adenauer Stifting. It's a German organization which we have partnered with to develop youth. Basically for youth, especially learners, to come up to date with, if, with things that affect their lives, their daily, their daily activities in the environment where they are living. So social, economic issues. Because what we feel as youth, we can see that usually the development that goes on around us, we speak about youth is part of our future, they hold our future, but sometimes we keep youth out of the decision-making process. They are not part older people decides for them. So this partnership is to open up discussions with youth about aspects that affect them socially, where they can see how they, so that we can hear what are their feelings and their ways, how they think about the issues that affect them. So this is one of the dialogues that we're gonna have. And as you know, one of the dialogues that we're gonna have, we, the topic is the South Africa of Nelson Mandela's dream, the state of our democracy, in society. What we see outside, we could see in the first, in the last few months, last few weeks, what is happening politically around us. So this is not a political discussion. If you think that, that is only effects. Effects that, uh, that basically is related to you, how you feel about these particular issues. Do you still feel positive about the future, which you, within a few years' time, have to make the decisions that uh, grown-ups is making today? So with that, I want to welcome you to this particular debate. Our facilitator will be my colleague, Sipokazi Tao. She will then uh, facilitate this particular session for us to give input. What we're gonna do, like in the beginning, we will play a two and a half minute uh, like a video, uh, what people's feeling is around Nelson Mandela, which has been done at the university, and then certain aspects that relate to Nelson Mandela only to summarize him in one word. We will put it up as a background before we go into this particular discussion. So welcome. Can we have Sipokazi to come forward? Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Oh. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm tempted to take this mic off a um, moment. Okay, cool, let's try that. All right. Fantastic. Um, as introduced by Rodney, my name is Poga Zidau, and I'll just basically be facilitating the engagement that you will basically be having, just to make sure um, that the conversation flows, just to make sure that everyone is contributing and participating in the conversation. I also think that it's quite fitting um, for us to be having a conversation about what we think the state of democracy is, or what we think society should look like for us, looking at you know the recent events. I'm assuming that most of you are on social media because that's how young people are these days. There's a lot of conversation taking place um, on social media, um, a lot of conversations pertaining to gender in particular, um, about how unsafe our societies are. And when you think about it, in particular in the environment that we are in right now, the issue of safety has always been in question, right? When you look at the state of our townships or the state of the northern areas to be specific, um, safety has always been a conversation. So I think it's, it's, it's high time that we just drive that conversation just a little bit further. And just to look at what outcomes do we want um, to, to have? What kind of societies do we envision? Do we have hope um, for a better society, for a better South Africa? I think those are the conversations that we can have today as honest as you would like to have them. All right, so just before we begin, we're just gonna play a little clip um, from the institution, as some of you may know, um, some of you may not know, uh, the NMMU is changing its name to Nelson Mandela, Metropol Nelson Mandela University from Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University. And we're starting to have the conversation about what does that mean for us as an institution? What will our new identity therefore become? because of that name. So just linking that with, now, with, with the conversation today, we're just gonna look at um, what people generally think 
um, of Nelson Mandela, what the perception is, and then we'll take it from your end, whether you agree or whether you disagree and so forth. All right. All right, so I do apologize if there was like some slight difficulty with you um, hearing, um, but let's just open the discussion and see whether you agree with certain things um, and certain views um, that, were, that were held about um, Udada, if you like, and, and let's, let's hear what the, house of, the, the feel of the house is. So you can just note yourself if you want to say something. Anyone? All right, so we have, we have our hand up here. Um, I'm not going to roll mics around, so we're just going to see if you're audible enough. And I think you're audible enough, so let's try that. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think Nelson Mandela means rainbow nation. Greatness beyond expectation. Thank you. So let's just get your name. Natasha. Natasha. So Natasha tells us this idea of a rainbow nation, right? This idea of a unified group of diverse individuals, right? So that's a, that's a very good perspective. Thank you, Natasha. Have another hand? Hi, uh, my name is Mark Anthony. And I believe that Nelson Mandela is, is a great man and he left a legacy behind for us. And he left a standard that I don't think anybody can stand up to. But that's why we are uh, we're here to organize and become leaders just like him because he left such a great legacy behind for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Mark. Um, do we have any other hands just before we close this round? Okay, so there's one noted on this side. Anyone on this side? Um, I think um, Nelson Mandela means to me that uh, someone who was courage enough to change the world, someone who had that spirit that nobody has that time, Somebody who was fearless, um, who changed the world. Okay. And um, can we get the name? Snowboyo. Snowboyo. Do you have anyone on this side? Just one more hand. All right. Give us your name and the school that you come from. So um, I have Kwasa Kelo over here. Sorry to interrupt. No, we have Kwasa Kelo over here. We have two from Kwasa Kelo. Hi. And? Hi. Pardon? Galvin Hi. Galvin I am Sibong Kushawoyi from Patterson High School. I believe the word Nelson Mandela, to me, it means being joyful, being cheerful. It's not only about that fighting. It's about humanity. Humanity, being together. As, um, I think it's Novoyo. I'm not sure. The one from Goza Kelly said that it means being a rainbow nation, being able to be that child. Today we're children. We can't, um, we can't just, you know, it's difficult to roam around the streets because of all the crime and everything. So to me, that word means joy, being free, being able to express yourselves. That's what Nelson Mandela means to me. Um, fantastic. I love the enthusiasm. I love the enthusiasm. And I think that these are the conversations that we'll have just a little bit later when you extend on that. And when you extend on that, you speak on what does it mean to live in a rainbow nation? What is the rainbow nation? Um, that is actually a conversation that we are having in terms of the, the economic state. Um, so for some of you that are not clued up on that, that's okay. Um, you will deal with the conversation later in your lives. It will come to you. <laughs> but that's the conversation we're having. What do these words mean? And more so, the, con the question we need to answer today is, do we see that happening? Do we see a rainbow nation today? Do we see freedom today? Right? Do we see that unity? Do we see leadership today? 
Those are the questions that we need to answer today. Have we realized or are we in the process of realizing the South Africa and the society that Nelson Mandela envisioned? That's the question that we need to, to, to answer today. All right, um, Kamani, on your end, uh, do you want me to take this closing before we move? All right, so what we're going to do now is, just very briefly, um, we're going to divide it into two big groups, right? So we're going, we're going to see whether this, this rainbow nation unity thing can function. Um, but we think, we think you all are born leaders and we think you all have capacity to engage and communicate with each other. So we don't think that this will be a problem, right? Yeah, yeah we don't think that Kamani and I need to come and intervene and facilitate your discussions. We think that you are exactly, you are more than capable of having your own conversation. So we're going to divide into two groups. And into these two groups, we need you to respond to that question um, that I asked. What is the South Africa that Nelson Mandela envisioned? And do we see it today? And some of the things that you spoke about do speak into that, right? So also, you also look at if we have not realized the South Africa of Nelson Mandela, what do we still need to do, for example, to realize it as well? All right, so those are basically the two questions that you will look into. So we're just going to have a right group and we're going to have a left group. Um, we'll call you the Mandela group here, we'll call you the Madiba group that side if you like. So we'll give you team names, okay? We'll just make it a little bit fun. And, and it, will be slightly, it will be completely dependent on you, how you want to facilitate your discussions. Um, it won't be more than 10 minutes. So we'd like everyone to participate and everyone to contribute, of course. And then we'll have a debriefing plenary where we'll discuss the outcomes of, of what you have discussed and, and we'll take it from there to look at possible solutions, if there are any, right? Um, I think, I think we, we are in a group of future leaders and future policy makers and people with solutions, right? So I think we could possibly have a few solutions that are emerging out of the discussions that we have. All right, but then I also just want, in addition to that, I just want to voice out that you know that there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer. Your experience is enough, right? We all have different experiences and different realities. So you can't have one that is apparently better than the other. It's, it's whatever, but we want to have that difference of opinion. We think that that is something that Nelson Mandela also valued very much, the, the ability for people to, to to relate to each other, irrespective of whether they have different opinions or not. Right. So we're going to have this group, and you can YOLO, do what you feel is comfortable for you in your respective groups, and then after 10 minutes, we'll then debrief and come together, um, and then look at the outcomes. Um, I also want to suggest that there are one or two people that are scribing in your respective groups, right? So that we can have it on paper. Because often discussions just end there, in discussions and they go nowhere. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to keep at least a paper trail of the conversations that we're having to remind us as to, on a particular date, at a particular venue, we had this discussion, and this is what we wanted to say, uh, uh, or this is what we had to say um, it, from that discussion. We just want to have that um, documented, and then we'll see what we do with it, um, also dependent on how you feel um, should be the, the action that's taken from the decisions uh, and the discussions that we have today. All right, are there any questions before we move into our new decisions? Yes. So you're going to have like a kumbaya moment. Do you guys know that song, that kumbaya song? Yeah. Or like unity and people are like around a, a fire and they're holding hands and they're singing kumbaya. So yeah, I call it a kumbaya setting. So you'll just be like, you just have like a little circle. And, and just go all together and have that. All right, is that, is that okay with you? No one is claustrophobic and doesn't want to be in someone else's hair. Okay, all right, so we're going to give you 10, about 10 minutes. Yeah, can you give about 10 minutes, colleagues? <laughs> okay, so I'm saying it. Is the Nelson Mandela vision on? Okay. Do you need the exact question? Yeah. So the question is, um, what was the the So in that question?
but he knew that on the inside we're all the same type of people. Okay, so that's one point that I have. If somebody is taking that down. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, we got somebody taking that down. But does anybody else want a point to say? Does anybody else have something to say about what we think of the whole Nelson Mandela? What do you do to make sure activism, fairness and freedom and stuff. But then I do not think that we are living in that vision of what are you saying? I don't think we live in I don't think we live in that kind of society because um we we, we, we find inequalities uh, amongst our schools even. Um, you see you see a white person in the name you see a white person in the name you already have something to say about that person why do you have that six minds so I don't think we <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, Madam here, yeah. Madam SK, um, just give me a point on xenophobia. Um, so also the xenophobic the, the attacks, I don't think it must never be proud to see us um, as South Africans um attacks um, foreign nationals. Foreign nationals are our brothers and our sisters. We do the same as Mr. You can have said we 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 Oh you win, okay, sorry. Um we we have the same bus we we're the same. We come from a mother's womb, just as mentioned. So are we not living in in, in Manila's so what for us to also so you have the special ability to think what the Rainbow Nation is about, right? You guys know what the Rainbow Nation is about. To me, the Rainbow Nation, guys, is that all of us coming together to make this South Africa a better place. Many people want to leave South Africa because of South Africa's current state. I don't believe in that. That's cool. I don't believe in that. 
that each and every one of us has a responsibility to make South Africa a better place. The reason why we were born in South Africa is for a reason, guys. I have my own idea of South Africa. So let us come together okay. and share our own ideas with them. And let us build the Martin Luther King the foundation of Nelson Mandela, right? Yes, guys, let us build a house. Let us build a successful house. We are not South Africa, we are Azami. Our original name is South Africa, is Azami, right? So let us build a for Azami for you, for me, for our kids, for our grandchildren, right? Thank you. generation than the people ahead of us, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we can be like him, not, but not like go to prison for 27 years. We can, <laughs> we can like fight for our freedom, yeah. um, speak our minds, and yeah, fight for our rights. <laughs> But then how are we going to, but then, so those, that older generation didn't make an impact on us, teach us, or, or, or teach us how we must treat our country and treat each other and stuff like that and keep on the legacy. So how are we going to do that too for, 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 the, for our children, for the next generation, because we were not taught that thing. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you know what? I think we must just bring up our thing there, man. And we, 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 we can, hold on, hold on, hold on. We kill all the people ahead of us, you know? And we start a new generation. <laughs> the whole Nazi killing thousands of people and so on. It is a pointer, man. A pointer. Okay, come, join it. In the middle, in the middle. There we go. Thank you. We should let our greatness blossom and coming again to Nelson Mandela's vision. I think Nelson Mandela wanted a unified and prosperous country. Okay. The name is your name. Speak loud, guys. Speak loud. Ah, okay. At least, they must be. They must be. 
Uh, does anybody else have anything to say? There we go. Go. I think I'm change a nation. So, who do you think you are and if you like have a point on saying how Nelson Mandela, how you feel Nelson Mandela changed the nation, uh, okay then you can throw it in the in the group. But the question, who do you think you are? That is our, our whole emphasis. So, I think... Uh, sorry, wait. If you can, uh, just stand up and then speak. You guys can stay where you are because you know, we all love being on camera. <laughs> Positivity rubs off on you guys. My out, my outbow, my I don't know, me being bold rubs off on you guys. Because me standing here, it's I know for somebody to just stand here and talk and um, to be honest it's, it's not really easy. But you know, the minute you do it, it's it's like you carry it's like you're setting a train, you know? It's like a constant pattern of something that like how can I say? It repeats itself. The minute Nelson Mandela spoke to a crowd of people like this. Uh, next thing you know, he was ready to speak to a nation. 
Yeah. No? So I, I feel like this uh, is also something that we need to look at. I mean, she's been sitting there wanting to say something, but she hasn't said it, you know? <laughs> so I mean, she needs to be bold and say something because that's the only way she will be, we will be able to change the nation, you know? So we, we all need to be bold and coming to the conclusion of who do I think I am, well, I'm a very forward, I love smiling, I love talking to people, but I'm a very outrageous person. So, yeah, anybody else has anything to say? Um, I would like to say that um, yeah, there are world changes in the future and she's going to say that we're going to talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of us being shy now, you can say anything, just one word. I mean, can you? I'm going to start by you again. <laughs> you can imagine that like, hey, it's fine, I also didn't think about English, but I'm trying. Yeah. But um, there are men, you can say anything. Uh, what do you think? You are just one word, just one sentence. And it's what you say then, but not how you say it. And every time he this class of stuff, he speaks his Afrikaans and like, um, I can really not speak Afrikaans. I can't speak Afrikaans. I'm just making an example. I'm just making an example. The thing is, it's just that the message is through that we can hear you. And this, if I can hear you, I can pass it on to the next one without interrupting you. So if you have a point to stand up, or you can sit there, if you have a loud voice, okay, I know I have a loud voice. If you know you have a loud voice, I do this will not, will not get us anywhere. It will not get us nothing, but it will get us. It got us yes, it got us to the apartheid regime, but what did it get us? We still wear uniform like this. We still get discriminated by those people in some way. It's time that we start standing for what we believe in. It's time that we start changing the Kelvin days, the Gwaza Kelas, the Trodevils, and become and stop education. The policemen that they want to be, the principals of schools, the principals of somethings and somethings, not gangsters. No. What's a gangster? What's the point of getting money now and then you're going to be in jail or going in the grave later? Let us change our mentality. If we change the way we think, we can change this world. South Africa is a very, and I repeat, is a very powerful country, ladies and gentlemen. We just need to realize it. And we just need to put down strategies into place. And we just need to formulate the strategies that will make this world a better place. Yes. So from my point of view, I think we are I think perseverance because he, like all those years, he like, like sacrificed his, his life, his family. Like he said all those years in general for us. So that's what I think when I think perseverance, respect for the same
but change starts with you. If you want to lead, you need followers. But you won't have followers if you're not the leader. And people, there's a saying that goes, embrace your destiny because it's already embracing you. What can we do in order to change South Africa? Uh, as you have said, it starts with you. It starts with you. If I love myself, then I can love someone else. Then that love will pass all around us so that you can change what is going on around. Because if you if you notice here in South Africa, it's all about you, you love that hatred. I don't know why, but we that hatred. If we start loving ourselves, then we can all change South Africa to love. Why would somebody just wake up one night and decide to be against them, or be, decide to be weak, or decide to steal from his blood? <coughs> or why would somebody wake up one morning and decide to kill a, ch a young child? Why? Why is that? Okay, fine. We say we are free. We have freedom, but we don't have that freedom like in peace. We have freedom like in a but in a frustrated way. We're so frustrated. We, we are South Africans. When we, we are the people who have freedom more than any other country. If you go to Nigeria, if you go to Zimbabwe, if you go to any other country, we get each money. But instead of using our our, our knowledge and using the, 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 the God given freedom or the freedom that now we are spending, instead of doing wrong things, so like what I want us to do is be terrific. What we have to say what they see, we, we, we don't see, like they say that um, on the social media that we have freedom, but I don't see freedom. I don't see freedom at all, because even up to now, I can't like sit next to you, like you know, that's, you know, that's it. Oh, I can't talk, I can't, I can't like talk my, 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 my language, or, you know, so they say like, I'll take it, but it's in, it's in like an underground way, so I would like us to be so what we want yeah, yeah, and yeah, what yeah, we yeah. do see and okay. what so is going in? wrong yeah. in South Africa. Because there's a lot of things going wrong. We say we have freedom, okay. but it's so not freedom. It's, it's, no, okay, in Nelson Mandela, when he was here, we did have that freedom right? But now that he's not here, I don't know what's going on. It's like chaos, South Africa, I'm telling you. It's, it's not level, it's not the way it's supposed to be. So let's just be perfect and stuff like that so we can just feel because right now I think we only have two minutes or three minutes. Okay, yeah, thank you. Inspire and social. Okay. Uh, I disagree with you. Saying that we are not yeah, yeah. I disagree. We, we, we are experiencing freedom, but the only problem is we don't experience the freedom with responsibility. Like you saying, people steal, people kill. They have the freedom to do that because they can't use it. The freedom to make responsibility in getting the money the proper way. They're gonna go, yeah, you're some easy money. Let me steal from you. Let me, steal from you. Let me kill you so that I can get the money. You see how prison is stealing from us is his people because he doesn't have the responsibility to earn his That's own right. money. Okay. Okay, guys. Like, I want you guys to, to tell yourselves that I'm your lady. I can make a choice. No matter. But you know, on my own, I can and I know what's right, and I'm gonna do it. And guys, tell me why. <laughs>
that was part of his vision. So he did not he, he did not foresee that was going to happen. And so it, it, it goes back to the mindset thing. You need to do some introspection and change and see us. Um, our actions don't get all bad. Get to 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 um you know to interject and to interact uh, with the thoughts that were taking place um, in the various groups. So this is Mandela Madiba. So let's hear from Madiba first. Madiba, yes. one or two things that came out from your group. Um, yeah. Do we have any volunteers? Just one or two ideas that came out. Anyone? Yeah. Uh -huh. 
afternoon once again. To those who didn't hear who I am, I am Sibyl Gutlewoyi from Patterson High School. And we came up with a few pointers. One of the pointers was that, of, okay, the question that Nelson Mandela, that Mandela wanted or whatsoever. Um, we came up with numerous pointers and one was that it's not happening. It's not happening at all. Many things are going wrong out there. But the thing is, we came up with solutions. And it starts with you. It starts with you when no shell out. It doesn't start there. It doesn't start with Uzuma, for Uzuma to tell the world what to do. It starts with you. When I be your own Mandela, because this little world is your own world. Change your own world. We know that what Mandela envisioned, most of the things are not happening. We're not saying not all of them are not happening. But then the thing is, majority of those things are not happening. And let you be your own Mandela. When I change what you want to change about yourself, change it for the better, change it for the positive things, be your own Mandela. Uh, okay, so I had like, like a question that I want to throw, throw, throw up in the group, but I got a question for all of us. Uh, we, do we all have faith? And I believe, I believe we do. <laughs> because uh, the way I look at it, if we were, if we had to plant an apple, yeah, an apple seed, bananas won't come out of it. No. <laughs> uh, oranges won't come out. We believe that the apple will come because uh, clearly on the paper it said apple seeds, you know. <laughs> so uh, I believe that Nelson Mandela had faith in himself and he had faith in other people as well. So uh, I've, I've heard the saying numerous times, whatever you read, you will sow, you know. So we've come across that we need to focus on ourselves. So I believe that we should stay positive, you know, and knowing that we rub off good things on other people, let's hope, let's hope they rub it off on other people, you know, because what Mandela has done has been there up until he passed over, you know, until he passed on. And then you got a whole lot of people that just stepped up and all they wanted was, you know, the ranks, you know. I'm president of South Africa, you know. So let's hope that we can, <laughs> yeah, we can do good, focus on ourselves, do the positive, and then hopefully it will rub, out, rub off on others having faith. So, yeah. Great. All right, so um, I like that. I think just one thing that um, I picked up from there, and maybe the other group can respond to it, is when we say um, the dreams and the ideals uh, that Nelson Mandela wanted us to realize have not been realized, what exactly are we talking about? So what are those things that he said arguably needed to be done or needed to be accomplished, okay? So I just want to throw that question. So even if you don't answer it, perhaps we can answer it at a later stage in our discussion, okay? So let's be more specific. Okay? Let's look at things around us, what's happening around us, what do we think should have happened, what is not happening, what do we think is fair, what do we think is right, okay? What do we think is a privilege? What do we think deserves to be a discussion in society today that is not a discussion, okay? All right, so let's hear from the other group. Do we have two volunteers from the other group? Two different schools, right? Yes. Perfect. Okay, um, afternoon everyone. Speaking in front of me is a guy from your high school. Um, basically, when we are um, discussing and um, we came up with um, a lot of issues um, that we're dealing with as a country as a whole, um, but as for um, Nelson Mandela and what we, he stood for, we all believe that education was the main goal that he stood for. So for us, we believe that we all need to be educated enough so that we become the leaders of this country. What he envisions South Africa to be, clearly, we believe that it's not happening. Or in fact, it is happening, but people are not taking responsibility of the freedom that they have. So therefore, we believe that we have to be the leaders of this country. We need to take stand as the youth. 
we need to be the one and we actually have to partake in every decision that is being is being made because it does impact on us. It does have an effect and an influence on each and every individual that is sitting here. So as the youth, we need to be visible to the country as a whole. We need to know that even Nelson Mandela himself said that education is the only tool that we can use to change the world. So that is our that is our um, thing that we actually raise to everyone. Be educated, know what you stand for, and also be a part of time. All protocol observed. Yes, yes comrades, my Kabani. Yes. Yes. Standing before you is Mr. Tikito coming from Peterson High School. I do not stand for Peterson High School. I do not stand for Port Elizabeth. I do not stand for South Africa. I stand for the youth. Yes. I stand for the youth. I stand for the ability to change the world. In South Africa, currently, the youth is 60% of the population. And therefore, we have the power to make the according decisions. Education is the key to success. Nelson Mandela himself said that. So if we continue getting level sevens and the ones before us, they want to get they want to be top gangsters and they want to be top 26s and 28s and 27. Why? Then what is our point of getting level sevens? What is our point of coming from communities like what I can show level, given them if we cannot change, if we cannot make the difference in our own communities? Change. Change, changing lives and making a difference is not easy, but it has to be done. You have the power to change the world, and the power can be changed by you. One man can change the world, and I want you to come to a realization that what that one man can be you. Exactly. As far as I could be saying that he it while he's still young. Let us be, as the youth, as grade 11s, grade 10s, grade 10s, 11s, and 12s, Go to grade eights, guys. Tell them that education is the key to success. Make them make them see that education is the way forward because even our president now is not educated. So so I think the second question that comes. Um, in particular from this group, and it's almost like it's a command, it's a calling that we need to take charge and we need to, to be the change, right? So then the question from there becomes, what are you doing as an individual sitting here saying that? What are you doing as an individual to change? All right? Okay, that, 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 that works as well. So, so, so those are the two questions that we need to ask ourselves. I also think something that also stood very strongly was the, this idea of the Rainbow Nation that I think we didn't explore sufficiently. Guys, can I just have your attention? Yes. Great. So I think this idea of the Rainbow Nation is something we didn't explore very extensively, right? Maybe you did that in your groups, but it hasn't come out. And that's the question of identity. Um, who do you, or how do you identify, or who do you identify with, um, or as? So that's also one question that I think that arguably you need to explore as well. Um, can we also go back to what are the things that we think needed to be done that are not done? So when we say what Nelson Mandela wanted to accomplish is not accomplished, what exactly are we talking about? Do we have responses to that? Yes. Right, so we have a hand there. We have another one this side. Okay, I'll take one at the back. Um, okay, so I'm going to skip your hand first. I'm just going to take OCC at the back and my brother at the back. All right, you want to come to the front? Hello, afternoon, future leaders. My name is Teresa Loy. I'm from KPI. Can you see I'm short, no? I'll keep it. Short and sweet. Uh, all I want to say is that in the day's lives, uh, Nelson Mandela fought for freedom and equality. Do you see it in today's lives? No. You get the education, but you get the education you want. No, no, no. Okay, show me what do you want. Textbooks. Okay, she says she'll come back to us with an education party. 
But I'll just take this, this one point that she said. She said that we are government schools and there are private schools. The government schools get poor education and the private schools get higher education. Why is that? Isn't that a, um, something that's not equal? That's yes. all I have to say. No, 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 no. Whichever way we like, because 
the teachers can teach you any way you like. It depends on you if you feel you want to do the work or you want to be the education. Yes, I've noted you. Two things that I think are quite fundamental that come from, from the Madiba side. A, the fact that as a country or as a society, if you like, we are not unified. Quite problematic. It's quite problematic that there's still a conversation, that society is not united. And I think it's, it's a very beautiful thing to be able to identify that, number one. Number two, to also be able to identify that through working together, you accomplish more. Right? The second thing that's also fundamental that comes there is the role we need to play as students in the education system to make the education system what it's supposed to be. Right. Because often when you have the conversation of education, it's the blame that's placed on the educators. And you don't look at the role as, that we as, as, as learners play. I think that's quite a fundamental thing. All right. So let's get closing statements from the side. Okay, so I'm going to take hands I haven't taken before. So that's one. Is there another one? Uh, I'm taking you, so I can't take you. Sorry, I'm taking Well, I think it's going to say very short. Instead of us just saying that I'm colored, I'm white, I'm black, why don't we just all say that we're South Africans? Because that is what we are. That's the only way. A rainbow is a rainbow. They don't say the white, black, the white, yellow thing there in the sky. They say the rainbow. So instead of saying the black, white, colored land, we just have to say that we are South Africans. Well, I'm going to quote from Madiba's last few words before he was sentenced in 1964. He quoted, The ideal of a free and a democratic society in which all persons live together in harmony and equal opportunities is an ideal for who I am going to die. Now, the topic... The topic that um, the enemy in view um, said that we must research is that the dream of Nelson Mandela, the democratic and society in today. Not in the past, not in tomorrow, but in today. Now, what I'm saying about him today, we, as Nelson Mandela said about, um, he talked about the harmony before he was saying this, there is no harmony in our country. Um, I never saw anyone mentioning that um, girls are being abducted. No one mentioned that we are not safe. Why aren't we talking about these problems if we say that we have solutions? Well, I think someone is going to have a solution for that. But what I'm saying is that we are not in harmony. And as um, the sir said that we need education to become a leader, well, the, the current president has no education, but he is a leader. Now, what does that bitch say to us? It says that you need connections. Or you need a way to, to become a leader. Now, we as Uluj, as the youth, we should bring change. Johnny, we have to know what is going on around us. And we have to know the politics that are happening. Because in order for a politician to, to hear what you're trying to say, you must be telling that under Article 53 states that, do you understand? Yeah. You can't just talk to a person or a politician, politician and say that, uh, well, we need this, we need that. There is a, a, a certain language that is needed for you to talk about that. Allow me to take my seat. conversations, these recurring thoughts um, that we are having. The first one is, why do we continue as a country that was divided on race to continue to be divided on race, right? Why have we not received non-racialism is the question that comes from this side. The second one is to say, 
how do we influence society to a point whereby we influence also the type of leadership that we find in society? And how do we make sure that uh, people who deserve to lead us actually make it there, right? Um, also coupled with, I mean, the ideas we get is the more you learn and the harder you work, you'll get there. And we are told that that's not the case. You need connections, you need networks, and so forth. So how do we ensure that that becomes the reality? All right, so I've definitely enjoyed myself. I enjoy conversations like these, but I really, really think I enjoy just being on the outside and, and learning from you as well. I think often um, people talk and they don't realize that what they say often stays behind with the individual listening. So learn to listen and learn to learn, because for me this was a learning experience. And there's a lot of ideas that came out here that, that also sparked a lot of ideas in my mind. So I really do thank you for that. Also thank you for the opportunity. I think you have been a fantastic group. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> On behalf of the Red, I want to say thank you, uh, but I think Kamani uh, will do the official thank you, and now I'd like to hand over to Kamani Sinefu. Thanks a lot, Spogas. Yeah, good evening. Good afternoon. Good job. Yeah, let's introduce my name, Kamani Sinef, and I'm a student at MMU, or the university currently known as MMU, <laughs> soon to be called Nelson Mandela University. But I think to thank everyone, let me begin by the words of a famous politician who's American by descent, Bruce Party. He said, there is nothing splendid that has ever been achieved except by those who dared to believe that something inside them was too superior to circumstance. So, in a close quote, out of your circumstances, if there is something that is too superior inside you and is driving you, your circumstances will not deter you. With that noted, when Nelson Mandela uh, came out of prison in 1990, he raised his fist and he said, Aluta continue, meaning that the struggle continues. Those who are still ring through today in 2017, 27 odd years since his release from prison and five years after his death in 2013, the struggle continues. But I want to address in closing the issue of the triple challenge that our country is facing of poverty, unemployment and inequality. And I think it becomes, in fact, gives us a headache too. After 23 years after democracy, we still speak of these three challenges of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. And therefore, the patron is in your hands as those who are in high school and soon to be at university to be the think tank of the country on how we can address these challenges. On the issue of education, I think those of us who are already in university do not want for education. We want free quality and compulsory education. Classical examples have been set and we have seen that no free schools are a bad example of our country. And the education that our brothers and sisters are receiving there is not quality. Because in so long as, as my learned colleague here has said, in so long as section 29 of the constitution continues to make privatization of education, therefore some schools 250,000 per annum some schools free of charge. Therefore, the quality of education will never be the same. Those are the issues that you today have raised, and I think you must take them forward. In closing, this thing of a free quality education was something that was in the Freedom Charter many years ago, 1955, in Cape Town, when they said that all doors of learning shall be free and compulsory for all. And I think it's, some, it's something that the youth of 1976, when they fought against private education, have fought for. And it's a movement that we also, with Spogas, 
as the point moment are doing at the university to say that the door of higher education should be free and compulsory for all. And we can't wait to have you here. Uh, with that preamble, let me get uh, to my job here of thanking everyone. It's not easy to thank people because some of you, <laughs> yes, it's not easy. Uh, but before I mention the schools who are here, let me, as a disclaimer, say I thank you all. Okay. Uh, number one, the schools that are here is Chetty High School. Where is Chetty? Shai Chetty. Hi. And then we have Westville High School. Where's Westville? Shai Westville. Then we have Good Hope High. Shai Good Hope. And then we have Garden High. Our home. And then we have Chapman High. We also like, we also like to thank uh, Mrs. May for accompanying uh, the, the peoples. Then we have St. Thomas, we have St. Thomas, Shai St. Thomas, don't be jealous guys, Shai St. Thomas, and then we have Pedersen High. Yeah. We'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Tim and Cohen High, where is Cohen? Shai Cohen. Then we'd like to thank Ms. Nzobe with Newell High, Shai Newell. And last but not least, you would like to thank, uh, thank Mr. Liwani with Kwasa Kena High. <laughs> yes, we, the whole school who have participated here, it was Nelson Mandela again who have said that education is the best weapon or tool that we can use to change the world. So your presence here, is noted and well appreciated as well as I've said we have learned and we take all these lessons here back to the community because this is another thing that schools and universities must not operate in isolation with the entire society. You are sent to schools by parents to bring back the good of the education and plug it back in the society. But I would have not done justice if I'm not a uh, third moment. Uh, this is Mr. Sandra Neno uh, with this sound. We were restricted, but this is a business area. We wanted to dance to make sure to understand the limitations that the business business work, working hours. We'd like to thank in particular uh, Mr. Rodney Puza, who is the brainchild of this event, who planned everything uh, from the start up until the end. His work uh, will, of course, not stop here. Uh, we hope that this will be a continuous exercise and we want to appreciate him uh, for his efforts. Two spoilers. Uh, our, I think this one must go on TV. <laughs> yeah. Two spoilers now, my colleague, for facilitating uh, today's session. Uh, we thank you a lot and we, we see in you a future talk show host. Talk show host. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I will look, I will continuously look you to make sure that you grace us with your presence every day on television. <laughs> yes, I would like to thank Zipo. Zipo there at the back, Zipo Zamane, who is busy making sure that instead of 15. Yeah, 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 yeah. The national question was. The matter of all struggles political, you must understand, is the stomach. <laughs> and so long as the person is hungry, they cannot think and they cannot work. So as Lynch said back in the day that you take the mind to keep the body strong, but now we want to keep the mind strong as well as the body strong. So then you see what? Last but not least, we'd like to thank uh, the Farm Health Leadership Academy that has partnered with us, Dr. Governor and Lorien. Uh, we thank you for hosting us and working with us. As I've said when I was thanking Mr. Buzal that this is but the start of the four uh, events that we plan to have this year. 
and hope that we'll get an invitation from for my side. Uh, that is it. You know, in conclusion, what Mandela said, a new chapter for the new, the struggle for the news. I thank you. Thank you, Kamani. I think you left out to uh, thank uh, Marco of Blue Cherry Production, which is one of the recordings so that you can have a record of what has happened today. And we will deliver a copy of this video to each school so that they can, can view it later on. Uh, so, what we have to, first of all, with the food, we want to apologize to the Muslim learners. We know it's a fasting month, but we couldn't, like, uh, we had to give food, as he said, the struggle begins with the food and so on. So I hope you accept our apologies, and especially learners are usually hungry. So sorry for that. And uh, we have food at the back, we want to do it in an orderly way. So if learners can maybe move from this side, there's, a, there's food, but you take one pack, and then there's a juice, and then there's a little beef pack which the zipper will give to you there. So if we can move in this particular order, 